Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 97 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm making a dimension manual, because I think today's the day we're going to go explore the dimension building aspects of RF tools. Uh, so there's a whole separate manual to cover dimension building, and you should also check out my uh, mod spotlight on RF tools if you want to get an in-depth look into it. But today, we're going to uh, assume that you've watched my mod spotlight, hopefully, but also give you some general stuff just in case some of you haven't. But don't worry, it's not going to be an in-depth tutorial. It's more going to be, let's go have fun. So uh, there's a few things we're going to want to get going here. Um, one thing, though, that I might want to do uh, is take a look at some of the quick little changes that I've done between last episode and this one. Nothing too major. Um, I definitely uh, moved this screen here. I might put it somewhere else, to be honest with you, but I'm thinking my teleporter control screen for my computer craft monitor is probably going to wind up on that wall. could probably even put this right up here. That actually might be an even better place for this thing to live. So if I put him there and told this to scan for screens, boom, there we go. It's back up and running. Sweet. Um, so I went ahead and added an RF module that gives you the RF per tick, so the change in RF per tick, uh, to the main power thing right underneath it. Neat, right? Um, I could do a couple other things, but we're going to play with that in a little bit. For now, I want to build a dimension, and then I'm probably going to want to work on teleporting to that dimension, courtesy of this nifty guy, and then who knows what else I'm going to work on. So let's get started looking at what we need to do to make dimensions. I'm going to go get some of the machines required right now and prepare them. All right, guys, so I am tapping into one of my power lines, and we're going to power two very important machines if we want to go jumping around and playing around with different dimensions. Well, actually, I guess this one doesn't need power, then does it? Cool. Hey, nice. Okay, we only need power on one of these machines. So Dyer suddenly just learned. Um, that's interesting. When I broke that block, I got the wrong one back, or... You know, probably just coincidence. I happen to have one laying around somewhere. Okay, weird. Anyway, let's do stuff with things. Uh, I'm going to put all this stuff away and check out what we've got by way of these two new machines that I just hooked up here. First is this block right here, which according to Willa is the Dimension Inscriber. This is the block that's responsible for creating dimensions based on the criteria that we define. Cool. Uh, now we're going to need one of these guys. Ta-da! An empty dimension tab. This thing is responsible for defining what properties the dimension contains. Ta-da! Uh, achievements. Uh, what we're going to do is define the types of properties of the dimension. So if you played with MISCraft before, this is kind of where you would put pages in, uh, but it wouldn't be MISCraft pages, it would be RF Tools version of pages, which are called dimlets. And you can define the type of terrain and the type of world and what kind of stuff is in there and all kinds of neat things. Okay, uh, But because we don't have any dimlets yet, we're going to have to go ahead and set this up. So I'm going to call it World 1 and hit Store. Doo -doo -doo, and we've got a Realize Dimension tab named World 1. Uh, now, unlike Miscraft, you are going to need to power this dimension in order to get there and do stuff with it. One thing you can also do is, I thought you could shift right click it to see what's built in, but maybe not until, oh good, there we go. A whole bunch of power is flowing in, so that's kind of a nice deal. Neat. Are our lasers all done downstairs? Because if they are... Nope, not quite. Oh, I know why. You know what? I bet our uh, reactor is actually running now. Sweet. So is this thing filling up? Probably. I just want to see if our reactor is online. I think I'm probably using more power than I'm generating almost at this point. Yeah. There we go. Now we're back up to the positives. Sweet. So filling up that machine actually, you know, with all the lasers running downstairs and everything kind of tapped into our power. Anyway, back to what we were talking about. I just dropped this guy in here and boom, all of a sudden it's actually using power to generate the dimension as you can see here. Uh, it should be almost done. Come on now, finish up. There we go. Cool. Uh, now the realized dimension 
actually has a maintenance cost of about 10 RF per tick, it looks like. So currently, its internal power buffer is filling up, and that's why all the energy in here is kind of missing. And you can see we're draining lots of energy from our reactor at the moment, which is fine. Once this thing fills up its internal buffer of power, we should probably hook this realized, uh, hook this dimension builder into a stronger power source, but we'll look at that maybe in a little bit. Maybe I'll throw a Tesseract back there or something that just gets direct power instead of worrying about, you know, energy limits and whatnot. But, long story short, we have a dimension ready to travel to. Now to get there, we need to dial it with our dialing device. And you'll notice, oh, oh look at that, uh, dial base one, we can link to world one and we will dial this guy. Dialing device power low. Interesting. Good to know. I don't think that's true though. All right, guys, I think I'm ready to travel to this new dimension. Uh, what I'm going to do is step through the teleporter there. You can see I've bound it. I actually created a second dimension. I wanted to test something real quick uh, that we'll be uh, checking out in a bit here. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll be looking at that in a minute. I wanted to check out make another dimension. But first, I want to go to the first dimension I made and see how we make out. Now, before you leave, there's two things you should do. One, you should make sure that the dimension you're traveling to, this one, has enough power. You can see its current internal buffer of power is plenty, and uh, it has a small maintenance cost, so we should have no problem traveling to that dimension. Second, you're going to need a way home. I recommend the charged porter. Uh, it will use most of the energy in the charged porter to travel across dimensions though, so make sure you've got at least a fully charged porter here. You could also bring with you a uh, dimensional uh, matter transmitter. So if you brought a matter transmitter with you, or you could use Mistcraft linking books if you want to go that route as well. Uh, but I'm checking this out the RF tools way, so I'm gonna use the teleporter and everything. So maybe before we leave, um, I should actually look at, do I have any more potatoes that are cooked up? I'm gonna go snag a little bit of that as well. And then we're gonna go see what a randomly generated dimension happens to look like. Uh, now, like I said, it is totally randomly generated, so we are going to, uh, I have no idea what it's gonna be like. It's hopefully gonna be cool. Let's pop in and see what happens. Notice that teleportation takes a lot longer to transmit a player across dimensions. So we've started teleportation and now we just wait. It's a little bit more time to get from point A to point B. Well, I'm here. <laughs> this is a very strange dimension. I have not seen anything like this before. Uh, interesting to say the least, but pretty cool. Uh, lots of enemies here. I forgot enemies exist. It's been so long because I've had a magnum torch for a while. Uh, yeah, pretty crazy stuff. This is certainly a weird kind of dimension. It's not too important to stay near your like home area. Oh, look at this. I must be in some kind of mushroom dimension over here. That, that, that's neat. A fungi forest is the biome that I got. When we get back, I can check to see what random dimension controller type stuff was assigned here. So we could have an idea basically of what this place is like and what attributes were applied to the dimension. I'm going to let the world generate a little bit and fly around a bit and I'll come back in a minute once and if I found anything that's cool. All right, guys, I came back home. That dimension was too weird for me. And you'll also notice my charged porter had less than half energy remaining. So remember, a teleport between dimensions really costs a lot. Let's check out that other dimension I made. I just went ahead and placed it in here. So those realized dimension ID three. I'm gonna make sure that's the one receiving power. So I'm just gonna pop it in there. It drained all the power that was in the internal buffer and it's gonna fill up itself now. We'll put dimension the first one in there and we'll go redial and check out the new place. I'll be back when the world generates. All right, this dimension's kind of cool. Looks like it's pretty much a void dimension, which is nice. I like void dimensions, though I used to really like to customize them myself. Uh, but yeah, not a terrible looking dimension. Let's pop home. So let's talk a minute about these dimension tabs. Uh, there's something really important to note about these dimension tabs, and that is the following. If you create a dimension using the exact same configuration 
as a previous dimension, it'll link to that existing dimension. So if you would like instead to create a new dimension, you're gonna to wanna to create this digit dimlet. Now you can see that a digit zero dimlet can turn into a digit one, digit one can turn into digit two, and you can have as many of these as you want in there. So basically, you can have an infinite number of dimensions of all different types and kinds by just simply dropping the dimension digit dimlet in there with the blank inscriber. So now we can get a new blank one. If I didn't have this in here, in this empty dimension tab, so watch what happens when I click store, Note that without any configurations, it's already linked to ID number two, and the current power in RF per tick is already calculated. It's the same as this one, current power in RF per tick. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to extract the dimlets, basically erasing it. We're going to put dimlet one, uh, digit one in there, and then we're going to store it. And now we have a new dimension ready to go. Uh, if I wanted to, I could even hit extract and get that digit one back. And we'll name this uh, dimension two or three. It doesn't really matter. And hit store. And there we go. Realize dimension tab, name dim three. It's just got the digits one guy in there. Uh, I did want to take a look. Let's see, dimension ID two. If I shift right click this, we should see uh, some information. So the base seed world version is one terrain grid. So that's a type of terrain, I guess, that we got. So that explains that weird grid pattern. If we looked at this guy, we'll see that it's terrain void. Cool. Uh, and all the other information. So biome controller was mountains. This one was default. There's some sun, star, sky, and fog settings there. Pretty neat. Uh, let's go check out the brand new dimension. So I'm going to drop these guys in here, and there's Dim3. We'll drop this guy in. He'll start to get powered up, and once he hits 100%, it's ready for me to teleport over to that guy. Cool. Nice. So I'm going to go over here to my dialing computer, interrupt the dial. Then I'm going to say dire base to Dim3, dial it. We'll wait for the connection to be made. Cool. And now we're ready to step through. Start teleportation and see what this dimension looks like. I'm looking particularly for a dimension with some level of world generation because uh, once I find that, we're going to see some cool stuff. There's certain types of world gen buildings. Oh, this place is dark and scary. What the heck? Okay, neat. So it's a dark world with lots of what looks like snow blocks, but it's snow on top of what? Stone? So we're in a frozen river biome. Interesting. That sounds cool. Oh, and over here is some kind of tree, so I'm guessing this is a different biome. Nice. Cold taiga. All right. Uh, I'm going to explore this place for a bit. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'd already found a building that I'm looking for. Nice. So remember I mentioned that there are some dimlets we can use to customize and control. What dimension? Or frozen river. Okay. But there's mushrooms. Uh, I mentioned that you can customize and control. Ta-da! Your uh, dimensional stuff, and that needs dimlets. And we just found something called a dimlet. So there's a couple we got here. We got one for mob snowmen, so that'll cause snowmen to spawn in there. Uh, liquid oil dimlet. Oh, that sounds cool. I can make uh, liquid oil and feature lakes. So I can make uh, oil lakes if I want at this point already. Let's see what we've got in here. Uh, liquid molten bronze dimlet. Biome wetland. And we've got a handful of unknown dimlets. Cool. I think what I'll do is explore this place a little bit. This is interesting. There's like a weird little generation there, but there's another one of these houses. Oh, a couple of them. Nice. These things are a little bit common in this age, and I kind of like that. Dimensional blank block. I forget if these are useful for anything. Dimensional blank block. I think they're just decorative, to be honest with you. They do require dimensional shards, which we haven't found any of yet. But let's do this, that, and that. So let's see, I've got sky yellow fog, biome frost forest, and liquid liquid glass dimlet. Oh, that sounds cool. And in here, we've got biome deep mushroom forest and a couple more of these blank guys. All right, I'm going to toss all this into the AE system. I should probably come up with some kind of dimlet idea of how to store dimlets and what to do with them. But we'll deal with that in a bit. I'm going to run around in this age for a bit, exploring a couple more of these houses and such, and I will come back in a minute after I've gotten... Ooh, cool. I just got a little bit of nasty... Well, I guess this is a good place to be to get this debuff where bright light hurts me. But anyway, I will come back in a minute after I've collected a few more dimlets. 
Ooh, material sulfur ore, biome, feature origin, dimlet, some more of these unknown, sky dark blue, nice, and effect mining fatigue three. Not an effect I would typically want, but okay. I'm going to, like I said, explore and come back. Okay, guys, I think, well, wait, there's one more. Maybe I'll just sneak over to this one real fast and then we'll go. Oh, there's another one in the distance. I keep finding them. This is actually like somehow the perfect biome for finding these little buildings. Like, I don't know if it's meant to be as common as this is, but sky color cyan, abysmal block, digit four. Eh, it's not too exciting getting the digits. Those are craftable. Some of these um, things are craftable. Others are not. I think you can also get unknown dimlets from Enderman. I believe that's what I read in the RF tools manual. Um, and hey, since I see another one, this is what happens. Like I keep finding another one in the distance, like constantly. I'm, over here and I'm like I'm gonna go now I'm gonna head back and see how many dimlets I got and then I'd see another one in the distance and I'm like no must get more uh cool sky body large planet dimlet nice effect poison I don't think I want that digit four also not worthwhile sky red color nice and more unknowns neat all right this time for real heading back start teleportation cool Hello, I'm home, and it recharges automatically, because awesome, that's why. Nice. So I'm going to actually interrupt this teleport, so I don't accidentally go there again. Bye-bye. And uh, I really like the uh, Dim 3 dimension. That's awesome. It's a perfect dimension for finding a lot of these dimlets. Let's, speaking of dimlets, see what all I found. I'm considering having a crafting terminal. Not even a crafting terminal. Yeah, look at all the dimlets. Nice. That's actually a large amount. Let's set up a crafting terminal. Let's see. Crafting terminal. Do I have most of what I need? Probably not, but we'll make it happen. That's the annihilation core, so we're going to want a formation core. Go. Sweet. Now I can make a crafting terminal. And let's get some cables here as well. Let's do smart Fluix cable. 30 more of those should be doing it. So how can I, or where can I tap into my AE system from here? I'm thinking over on this side might be a nice place. So let's Oh, look. Cool. This is probably, if I were to wager a guess, let's go into Ender Mini form. So this is then not. I repeat, not a subnet or a P2P connection. So how much is going into this white line is the question. We are currently using 15 of 32 channels. So if I wanted to, um, well, I've got four available because we're using four of the eight on this line. So I think at least for now, because I don't plan to have a particularly large amount of channels here. What I think I'll do is if that's going to be that panel over there, I'll make this just temporarily, potentially forever, we'll see. There we go. And let's real quick do this as well to make stuff look nice. There we go. Cool. Now I just want a view cell. So let's get one of those. Cool. 
And where is my cell workbench? It's probably down here somewhere. Or maybe I left it over in my B area, or maybe I left it... Let's just check the B place real quick, because it might actually be over there. B lab. Yeah, there it is. Cell workbench, you're coming back with me to the base. Perfect place for it. Uh, so the view cell, we will want probably a fuzzy card. And we'll also want one of those. I don't know if the dimensional dimlets, I'm hoping this means I'll see all dimlets, but let's find out. And then the fuzzy card goes in there. Cool. Now if I put this view cell in here, does that mean, oh, I'm only seeing the one. The ones that I defined. Okay, I thought that the fuzzy would help. Let me see if I can't match any, right? Let me come back in a second here and see if I can't get this to work. All right, slightly new plan since that view cell thing didn't work out. I'm teaching my AE system how to make 1K drives. It already knows how to make 4Ks, but let's teach it how to make 1Ks because I'm going to want a very small number of a very large number of items. So unlike things where we have like 10,000 ethereal essence, 4 and 64K drives are like great for those because you have just a ton of a very small number of items. But even the 64K drives... Um, don't allow you to have more than 63 item types. And since dimlets, there are many different kinds of dimlets, and we're probably only going to have one or two or a couple of each of those, we're going to want to go down the route of 1K drive. So I'm going to get like four of these guys. Sounds ideal. Boom, 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 boom. And that looks cool. So then I'm going to take an ME drive, and I'm also going to get some more cabling. I'm going to see if I can do this entirely on a subnetwork without a controller. Should be straightforward. Uh, we're also going to want some quartz fiber here. Because we're going to want to snag power, but not data. And uh, that should be about it. We might want like interfaces and a couple other things. So we're going to see. Because I want to automate the conversion of random, um, you know, the unknown things into stuff. But we'll see. This will probably all exist now behind here. So what I'm going to do is probably convert this guy to a power share. And then we can put this thing here. Cool. So now there should be uh, just one data line going in here, right? And that's going up and there should be no channels in use beyond that. Nice. Uh, so we can also stick our disk drive here with many disks in it. And now this is a totally separate network. It doesn't need a controller because I'm going to try and do it with just eight. Uh, but if I wind up needing more, then so be it. Cool. Um, and eventually, maybe I'll even hook it up so that I can get this stuff out of there from my main network. But I don't know if it's entirely possible right now. Uh, let's get all our dimlets placed in here. So I'm going to do this. Um, probably the best way to do it is manually. So that's going to be a minute. So I'll be right back when I'm done. Wow, I have a lot of these... Uh, these things, don't I? But yes, all these will go in here, and this will be my dimlet subnetwork kind of thing. Yeah, see, these aren't recognized as the same types, I don't think. So I guess they're different item IDs. Well, no, they are the same item ID. So I don't know why the what I had done wasn't working. Well, that's a different item ID. Okay, well... I don't know. A subnetwork sounds more fun anyway. Be right back. Okay, so next order of business is making the dimlet researcher. This is the block that will be responsible for analyzing all those unknown dimlets I got and doing something with them. So let's get a couple things over here. We're definitely going to want power. So let's see, did I put away my conduits already? Probably. I should really be using, like, I don't know why I'm using low power conduits in this room because honestly I should be using high power, but I'm being stupid. So just let me be dumb, guys. I'll change this wiring. It just it just so happens that this is all the wiring I have over here already. So it's either rearrange all the wiring in my base to be higher powered in this area or just put this here for now and move it when we're done. And I like option number two. Put this here now and move it when we're done. So basically, unknown dimlet goes in 
and analyze dimlet comes out. Cool. Material purple stained clay dimlet. Yeah. Liquid molten aluminum dimlet. Yeah. Effect hunger three dimlet. You get the point. So let's do an import and export bus here. Import bus start. Export bus start. And we will snag both of these. And I'm basically going to want my unknowns to be on the export. So cables there. Hopefully this will be easy. Can I rotate this thing? Nice. That looks better. So we'll put the import into the side, I would think, and the export would go on the top. Okay, and look, now it's gonna read all these. Sweet. And then all I have to do is put in here the unknown material dimlet, and then that should start. Nice, it is working. Looks like I'm gonna want an acceleration card because it analyzes them faster than it's dumping them in. That's better. Cool. So that should burn through all my unknown dimlets, right? And quickly manage to, you know, analyze them and take care of them. So that looks nice. And I'm gonna put my other facade back on top. Uh, I thought I had them. Cable. All right, I'm just gonna have to go make a new one then. Be right back. Oh, never mind, I found them. Sweet. So the Dimlet researcher is researching. So any unknown Dimlets that land in this system will automatically wind up getting analyzed. That's cool. Awesome. And I should be able to search for things. So like if I wanted to find the Eldritch Dimlet. Nice. That is cool. Oh, field, that's why Eldritch field. Controller Fields Dimlet, nice. If I wanted to see all the mob dimlets, I could do that. Mob Mushroom, that's cool. I like it. So one cool aspect of this dialing device is that you can uh, mark different things as favorited, and then you can filter for only your favorited stuff. That's kind of cool. So if I wanted to, I can mark, you know, my uh, this thing over here. So I'm going to go ahead and dial that guy. Pop over to my quarry real quick. Whoosh, see how everything's going. Nice. Yep, there we go. And uh, that's cool. Then when I want to go home, easily enough. I like it. And then if I want to go get more dimlets, I can easily do so in my new dim three dimension. So I could just dial that guy up. Very cool. Uh, I might want to build my computer craft thing soon, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do it this episode or sometime in the future. Something I did want to check was down here. How am I doing? So we're just looking for glowstone at this point. How is my glowstone? Oh yeah, we're getting there. So this thing should actually turn off relatively soon, which will be cool because it'll mean we're not using power quite as much. So... Come here, Enderman. Aha, gotcha. All right, flying away. I'm thinking I wanna try and see what the chances of getting dimlets are. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this thing right over here. I have to remember how this whole system works. So that's like tweaked it and retweaked it about 10 times now. So right now we've got slimes in there. We're gonna drop Safari Net Enderman on there. That will be cool. Oh, he's powered off. Okay, so closed door. And in theory, Enderman should start spawning in a moment, I would think. You're full of essence. Okay, your idle timer's stuck. So we'll turn this off again. Okay, now the idle timer's dropping. Cool. So spawn exact copy is no. Good. Hooray. Enderman die. Nice. And we'll just see if we get dimlets from this. It's possible that they have to be killed by a player, which I don't think the grinder counts as player kill. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on this and what we'll probably wind up doing is coming back in a minute and seeing how we make out. All right guys, so I'm just gonna try something here. 
Let's snag this thing. I've been letting this run for about 10 minutes and gotten zero dimlets. So I'm just kind of, this is more of a test than anything else. But we're going to set this to spawn exact copy no and turn this bad boy on. So hopefully this will spawn some endermen, get killed by the beheader, which, you know, I could always swap that out for a better sword, something with like looting on it or something, um, and just hope for an increased chance of a dimlet. Right? So let's see what happens. So he dies. So this guy, remember, is definitely going to kill him as if a player did. Obviously slower than if a player did, but that's okay. We'll deal with that. So I will keep an eye on this for the next few moments and see if I get some dimlets more frequently as a result. Alright, so letting that run for a few minutes, I did get some unknown dimlets. So that's cool. So I guess they do have to be killed by a player in order for them to drop the dimlet thing. Good to know. Uh, whatever did happen to my skeleton spawner, by the way? I assume it's in here somewhere. I guess that's it. Probably. Okay, cool. So, may want to set something up like that to get many dimlets very easily. I mean, relatively easily. It wasn't that fast. I let it run for a couple minutes and got about five, so maybe an average of one or two per minute, but it was also pretty slow at killing the Enderman. So if I set up an efficient Enderman slaughter system, <laughs> then that might work out pretty well for everyone involved, except, of course, the Enderman. Ooh, neat. All right, so now that we've seen some of the basics of how RF dimension building works with uh, RF tools, I think what we'll do is wrap up the episode here. I'll look into getting some more dimlets, and then maybe we'll, uh, I think we're, we're I'm going to hold off on making any seriously useful dimensions that I want to have. Um, I would like to work on some other aspects of things. I haven't decided, honestly, um, and maybe you guys want to give some feedback in the comments here. Obviously, my base has grown organically and it's a little bit of a mess should i build like a void dimension where i you know go ahead and have like a properly built base like well planned out completely designated areas for like botania and blood magic and applied energistics and like each of those areas in a nice void dimension so that everything is well structured or should i stick with where i'm at so yeah, go ahead and feel free to leave some comments here. Um, maybe yeah, it'll be hard to track, I guess. Maybe I'll put like a straw poll or something. Look in the description of the video. If there's a straw poll there, it means I remember to do one. And if there's not, go ahead and just leave a comment. And uh, tell me if you would like me to stay where I'm at or if you'd like me to look into making a void dimension. If I am going to do void dimension, it won't be too soon, but you know, maybe in a few episodes, maybe in the 100s or something like that, would be a good time to start considering a move. Uh, but yeah, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We'll be back next time to hopefully have a little bit more fun checking out some of the other aspects of RF tools and a couple other things that I want to start working on, uh, even separate from that. All right, guys, take it easy.